Boom. Today, 10 ways to upgrade your skates. I'm Ivo, we are in the Disassault Skate Shop. If you want to upgrade your skate and to increase your performance, check out this video. I'm Ivo, the owner of Disassault Skate Shop. If you want to get some skates, of course, this is the right place. And we don't only have all the skates that are on the market, we also have all the little parts that you can accessorize the skate with. Of course, you can always come by our store and upgrade your skates here or check out our web shop, thisissoul.com. So here's a list of 10 things that you can do to upgrade your skates. The first thing is cutting off the flaps for your cuff. I always do this also for customers here in the shop because the flaps of a cuff are often too long and there's this little scissor logo here on it. And this logo means that you can cut it off, just take a saw or a good pair of scissors or a sharp knife and cut it off a little bit because then the cuff closes a lot better. Another thing that you can cut off is the buckle because often it's too long and it is a little bit hard to put it in all the way as far as you want because there's a lot of tension here underneath the cuff where the buckle goes in and because of the tension it's hard to close. If you just cut it off then you make yourself a lot easier. The second thing that you can do to upgrade a, a skate is upgrade the buckle. These buckles, they have like a standard mount. The distance between these holes is always one and a half centimeters on all skates that we have. It's a standard mount. So that's why we call it the standard buckle mount. And it's three holes, one, two here, and then one on, on the other side. So it's an SBM3 buckle and any buckle on our website that has SBM3 written on it will probably fit on your skates that you have. Plastic buckles that usually come with the skate are best to upgrade to a metal buckle. If you have a metal buckle, then first they don't break as quickly, so that's really nice, but they also close a lot better. Number three on the list is changing the frame. Of course, you wanna have a good solid boot that's nice and supportive and fits your foot, but then once you found that, that boot, you can change the frame to any wheel configuration that you want. For example, I have this skate here and it's a five wheel setup. So it's a really long frame and it's nice and stable. With a frame like this, you cannot fall anymore because it's so long, it's kind of like a ski. You can lean backwards all the way without tilting over. But the maneuverability from this frame comes from the rocker. You see here that the outer wheels, they don't really touch the ground like that. And that's what makes this skate really maneuverable. So it feels kind of like a, a four times 80 skate, a short wheelbase skate, but it's really nice. So this is just one example of the many, many frames that are on the market. There's like five wheels, four wheels, three wheels, flat with all four wheels or all wheels on the ground or rocker skates where the outer wheels go up. And all these different wheel configurations can probably fit on your skate. It depends a little bit on what type of mount you have on your skate. For example, this skate here is a 165 millimeter mount. That means that the distance between these holes is exactly 165 millimeter. And then with that mount, there's a raised heel. So the, the heel is higher than the front of the skate. For example, with this skate that I have here, this is a UFS skate. The distance is 176 millimeters between the holes. So it's about the same distance, but it's flat. And then there's one more mount, it's called the Trinity mount. The Trinity mount has the, the holes on the side. So it has three uh, mounting holes. That's why it's called Trinity. Mostly power slide skates have this and Icon brand has it as well. And then there's a few kind of like old school type of, uh, of mounts. For example, here this, uh, Roaches 1992 has riveted on the side and you cannot really replace this frame. So if you have a, a, a skate like this, then it will be really hard to upgrade your skate with a new frame. It's still possible though. You have to look at our review of this skate to, uh, to learn more about how to do that. And there's one other type of mount. If you have like this like cheap soft boot skate, this is a rollerblade one. It's not even that cheap, but it's still not like really supportive enough. Um, those type of skates, they often have like a rivet here. And this is also not replaceable. If you can replace your frames, try to experiment with it a little bit. It's kind of like playing golf. 
if you play golf, you have this whole uh, bag filled with uh, those golf clubs, and there's all types of different golf clubs out there. And for each swing, you have a different golf club. And that's the same with frames. For every type of skating activity, you kind of like have a, a different frame. It's fun to experiment with. Number four. <laughs> Number four is wheels and bearings. If you buy a skate, it comes with stock wheels and stock bearings, usually. And the stock wheels especially, usually are really slow wheels. So it feels like you always have the wind in your face and you're going skating uphill. That's kind of like how slow the stock wheels usually are. Uh, sometimes if you buy like a more expensive, like a three, 400 euro skate, then the wheels can be pretty good. But in general, it's worth upgrading your wheels. And um, good quality wheels are kind of like the rollerblade hydrogen wheels are, oh. One of the tests that you can do is to see how good a wheel is bouncing on the ground. That's called the rebound. The rebound value is the, the most important thing about the wheel quality. It's really hard to know really what the quality of a wheel is. In general, the more expensive a wheel is, the faster it is as well. Uh, if you don't know what to get, get the rollerblade hydrogen ones. Also really good are metal core wheels. So this famous wheel here, for example, has a metal core and they are a lot harder on the inside. That means the wheel wants to be round a lot better and rolls a lot better as well. It doesn't feel hard, but it rolls smooth. Inside the wheels are of course bearings. Bearings usually come in a package like this. They are these small metal um, pieces that go inside the wheel. And uh, you can maintain your bearings. We have this uh, bearing oil that you can uh, put in and uh, I honestly have to say that I tried this maybe two times in my life when I was really young and never <laughs> did it again because it's not easy to lubricate your bearings. Uh, it actually takes some, some skill. You have to have the right amount of oil in it. First, you need to take the oil out, so you have to kind of like clean it. You have to have a, a cleaner fluid for this as well. And then the, um, you need to leave it to dry, but then it can also rust because there's no oil in it. So you come back, back the next day and your bearings are all rust. Uh, and then you need to re-lubricate them, of course, seal, put the seal back on, put the bearing back in the wheel, put the wheel back in the frame. So it's a lot of work. It will cost you at least, at least an hour if you're quick. And it, um, probably the first time, like maybe two hours. Bearings are not so expensive. We here at, at this skate shop, we have bearings for only a few euros. I just replace my bearings like a couple times a year, maybe three times a year, I just replace my bearings and I even skate through the rain and everything. Yeah. So if you have time left in your life, you can loop your bearings. But if you're like me, uh, I would recommend you to just buy new bearings. Number five is the insole. And think about it, the insole is the first point of contact with your feet and the skate. So if you want to move your skate, the first thing you do is move your foot and then your energy gets translated through your foot through your, to your insole. And then the insole translates your energy to the liner and then to the shell and then to the frame and then to the wheels. So the stiffer all those connections are, the better you are at controlling your skates and uh, the less energy loss you'll have, the faster you'll go, uh, the higher your skills will be. Having a good insole really improves your performance. Uh, and it's hard to believe that unless you tried it, because once you tried it, <laughs> yeah, you'll know. A Superfeet insole like this is the one uh, we recommend. Uh, a good insole has a really hard cup, so I cannot bend this. That's, a, that's one of the things about a good insole is that you cannot bend it. Like the front I can bend, but if you can also bend the back, then you need to upgrade your insole. Another thing about these uh, insoles is that they have like a nice little cup that holds your heel right into place. Like if this was my, my foot, the cup holds your heel right into place and then it has a nice arch support for your arch. And this is kind of like the position that your foot wants to be in. And that's also the position that your um, you will have the most control over your foot. Another thing that it does is that normally when you stand and you, you bend your knees, your, your knees go a little bit inwards like this, but if you have your foot in the right position, your knees actually go straight forward. So especially with skating, you're doing this the whole time uh, and then your foot 
also needs to be in the right position because of that natural skating movement of, of bending your ankles. Next topic is number six, the liner. After you move your foot, your energy is translated through your insole, through your liner. The better your liner is in translating that energy to your shell, uh, the faster you go again. This liner is actually pretty hard and that means that it also creates a really responsive skating feeling. Um, people think that liners need to be comfortable and that that would be the main function of it. So usually if, if the liner is really uh, fluffy and, and, uh, and soft, people think that it's co really nice and that it's like a really good, good liner. What a good liner does is it's comfortable and it also has good energy transfer. Intuition liners, they have the best energy transfer. Another thing is that it's also heat moldable. So if you have like a pressure point, which for example, I also have in, uh, in my liners always, then you can heat mold the Superfeeds because it's uh, EVA foam, which is heat moldable. You just put it in the oven and then put it back in your skate and then it shapes to your foot. I would not skate any skate without an Intuition Liner. Seven is rockering options. We already talked about upgrading the wheels and we already talked about changing frames, but you can also change the rockering with changing the wheels or you can change the rockering by changing the axles. So let me explain what rockering is. You have to think of a rocking chair. A rocking chair is those chairs that go back and forth. And if you look at the bottom of those chairs, they are round. And that's also what a skate like this is. That's also round, right? So a rocker skate is really maneuverable because it only sits on two wheels or maybe three wheels at the same time. And playing with those rockering options, so putting the front wheels more up, is one of the options that some skates have. So maybe the skate that you have at home already has this option. So try to take out the, the axle. And then if you see this hole that's kind of like not round, but oval. And also here, this axle has like a little thing on it. You can put this axle in back again in two different ways. So up or down. And then with that, you can also change the wheel position up or down. For, For example, example, FR skates tend to have this option, like the FRX has it, the FR2 has that option. But also some old school skates, like this, they also have it. It has a plastic frame, and if you take out the axle, you can also take out the frame spacer and flip the frame spacer back in. So maybe your skate also has these rocking options built in already, and if it does not, you can also play with rocking options just by putting in smaller wheels on the outside. Just play with that, have fun, experiment, feel how it is. Because sometimes if you put in a rock ring, uh, so you have a nice rocker, then your skate feels suddenly so different, you so st suddenly start to dance on it because it's so maneuverable. And how much fun is that? Number eight is the ankle buckle. And my advice is to just take it off. I think these are, things are always sitting in the way. I know they're really great, yes, they do work really well and I actually advise people to use them to push the foot more to the back, you're locked in better, then you have better performance. That's all true, okay? But the downside is that you cannot tighten your laces anymore with it. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can just push it to the side. So that makes it uh, a little bit easier to access the laces, but it's just one extra things still that you, you need to do when you tighten your boot. And also, I just don't like the looks of it. I like the look of a skate that's more clean, uh, like this one, where there's no ankle buckle. It just looks a lot better. But then, of course, you lack the ankle buckle. And you can make up for that with this special lacing technique that I'm going to show you right now. If you take the laces that go out and then put it back in, in the last hole, you create this extra loop here. And then you use that loop to put the laces back in on the other side, like this. See that? If you tighten it now, you can tighten it super hard. And if you do that, then you actually don't need those ankle buckles anymore because this lacing technique is so strong it locks in your ankle just like an ankle buckle, pushes it all the way to the back um, and makes sure that 
you have a skate that's easier to put on. It's easier to take off as well because you already, it's already loose. It's, it's way easier to, you don't have to like search for the laces anymore if you want to untie it. Um, and it just looks so much better. While we're talking about laces, we're coming to topic number nine. If you want to use laces as your main tightening uh, thing instead of the ankle buckle, you also need really good laces. And really good laces mean wax laces. So for example here, no, yes. For example <laughs> here, the CCM laces are wax. These are hockey laces. They're really long. And we also have laced laces from the brand Laced from Dr Brandon Drummond. He's also a YouTuber, check out his channel. He's mainly doing aggressive skating, but also some freestyle skating content. Uh, and he has a little brand, it's called Laced, and they make shorter wax laces. So those are really nice. Uh, of course, available on thisisol.com. Oh, thank you, Eric. So there's always option number 10 to customize your skate, and that's color technology. This is the, one of the biggest cool things about inline skating is how technological savvy it is in the segment of colors. There's of course laces in colors, but there's also colored skates coming out and then they have different colored parts. So for example, this one is yellow and this one is blue. And then we always try to do our best to have all those colors available at our web shop. If you want to know what colors fit on your skate, so for example, maybe this pink cuff will fit on, on, uh, on your skate, but it's, you don't have this skate, but you have a different skate. We can like know what cuff fits on what model skates and what buckle goes on what skate. And also there's this little protector part here that we also have in all sorts of different colors. But did you know that the one from FR and Seba also fits on a rollerblade twister, for example? Well, we know, and we put all that information out there for you on our website. Um, it's called the Skate Part Finder tool. And with that, you can just look at your specific model that you already have, click on it, and then you see what type of frame will fit there, what type of buckle, what type of uh, slider protector, or what type of cuff will fit on it. And all this information is there. You can see all those products right away to make it easy for you to customize your gear. Have fun with it and be creative. And how often did you see me passing by? Let us know in the comments how many times you saw Eric. And we'll pick from the comments a winner for this cap. It's cool. This is Soul Cap. Uh, we'll send it to you for free. Thank you again for watching the video. We make a new video every week. So consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.